Greetings. My name is Jackson McFarlane. I'm the Building Maintenance Lead for the Napier City Council, and I will be your MC for today. Welcome all to our Māori Wards Community Hui. Uh, just a short COVID reminder. Hope everyone is safe and making the most of your time in your whānau bubble. Please remember, if you're going out, we are masked at all times and keep social distancing. And whānau, please be kind to one another. And remember, we are all in this together. As you may know, uh, we are inviting submissions on Māori Wards now. You can have your say by visiting sayitnapier.nz. Maybe you still have some questions of what Māori wards would mean for Napier and how they work. So hopefully we can clear these up for you today. Please send your questions uh, via Facebook and hopefully we can answer most of the questions today. We are going to play a short video and we'll be back real soon. What are Māori wards? What are Māori wards? What are Māori wards? Are they Māori wardens? No! no. It's about Māori having a voice at the table. Māori wards sit alongside general wards and allow voters on the Māori roll to elect a representative to their local council. Visit sayitnapier.nz to find out more. Korero mai. Korero mai. Korero mai. Korero mai. Say it, Napier. Welcome back. For those of you who have tuned in, ngā mihi. Welcome to our live Facebook broadcast regarding Māori Wards Community Hui. With me today, I have a panel who will help answer the questions and provide some information. We have Mia Kirsten Weiss, Beverly Kemp Harmer, and Helen Barbier. Ngā mihi. Kia ora koutou. It's a pleasure to be here with you today for this Māori Wards Hui. And I hope you and your whānau are faring well in lockdown. I think we should be thankful for this gorgeous weather, which makes it slightly more bearable while we're um, stuck in our homes. Earlier this year, uh, the government made some changes to the laws around Māori wards. And this now enables local councils to establish uh, whether or not to establish Māori wards for their city or district without it being able to be challenged by a poll. Previously, the law allowed a decision of a council to introduce Māori wards to be overturned by a local poll, and only 5% support was required to demand this poll. So it's been um, a really good move forward to change the legislation to remove the ability for these polls to be demanded. The ch changes were made in early March and councils were given until the 21st of May to decide whether they wanted to establish Māori wards for the 2022 elections. And you may be aware that a number of councils around the country were able to meet this deadline. And this is because they had previously um, undertaken extensive consultation with their communities regarding the establishment of Māori wards. Unfortunately for us here in Napier, we had never had any um, consultation with our community on this issue. Um, the only thing I'm aware of is in 2017, we, we asked one question in a survey monkey, uh, which was part of an, an overarching um, representation review consultation process. And we asked the one question, do you support Māori wards? Beyond that, we really hadn't had a conversation with our community uh, to get their views on the establishment of Māori wards. For that reason, as a council, we felt it was really, really important to take the time to actually have a proper conversation with our community about Māori wards, what they mean for our community, and you know how they will impact uh, the council processes and the council makeup here in Napier. So we have spent the last couple of months actually going out and sharing information and ensuring that our community has everything that they need to make an informed decision on this. Part of this process we um, included us having some drop-in sessions, um, meeting with relevant key stakeholders and quite a, a significant campaign just to actually provide that information of what Māori wards are, how they work and how they would impact Napier. So we're now moving into, or we are in, the 
formal consultation phase for the establishment of Māori wards. And we're really wanting to hear from you so that you can assist us with our decision that we will be making in October. And today, uh, this hurry is an opportunity for you to jump online and um, write in any questions that you may still have uh, with regards to Māori wards. So looking forward to receiving your questions uh, and then looking forward to making a decision in October. Nā mihi. Kia ora tātou. Nau mai hara mai ki tēnei o nga wāhanga kōrero. Hāngai ana ki tēnei uh, kaupapa o te Māori wards. Nā mihi ki a koutou katoa. Ko Beverly Kim Hama tōku ingoa, uh, no Ngāti Kahungunu ki te whanganui a rotu a hau, uh, no Ngā Hapu Toko Whitu, no reira te nā koutou. Morena, everybody. Uh, my name is Beverly Kim Hama, and I'm the newly appointed uh, Relationships Manager uh, for Napier City Council. Uh, my role is to um, strengthen the relationships between Māori, uh, mana whenua, and the Napier City Council. It's also to support our mana whenua and the projects that the um, council has. So, nā reira te nā koutou. Um, Māori wards um, may be a pathway to increase Māori participation because that's what we want. Uh, we want them around the table um, to uh, be in the decision making in these projects that um, the Napier City Council have. And um, the council recognise that this is not um, the only opportunity um, that is afforded to them um, to enable this to occur. Um, one of the other uh, pathways also is the Māori Committee. Um, there's um, good representation of mana whenua that's on here. You have a representation of um, marae, of our community marae, of our post-settlement governance entities that, are, that sit on this um, committee also. So you have great representation across the board in terms of ahuriri mana whenua. Uh, um, let this also um, not be, um, not replace um, our responsibility to mana whenua. Um, to engage and support and um, participate in all decision making that happens within the council. Nō reira koutou mā, tēnei te mihi ki a koutou katoa, nō hōra mai ki rotu i tō koutou miru miru, tēnā koutou katoa. Kia ora koutou, I'm Helen Barbie. I'm the Governance Team Leader at Napier City Council and I'm here today to talk about how Māori wards work. Following public consultation, if council decides to introduce Māori wards, then in the 2025 local elections, electors registered on the Māori roll will be able to vote for candidates in the Māori ward or wards. To stand as a candidate in a Māori ward, you have to be born in New Zealand, registered on either the Māori electoral roll or the general roll, and to be nominated by two electors on the Māori roll. The number of Māori wards is set in a formula in the Local Electoral Act and is based on a ratio of Māori electoral population the total electoral population is calculated by Statistics New Zealand and the number of ward councillors. If you want to register on the Māori electoral roll, which covers both local and general elections, your next opportunity will be in 2024. If we have Māori wards in the 2025 local elections, there'll likely be one or two ward members in council, depending on the total number of all our councillors at that time. Decisions on matters like the name of the wards, its boundaries, will be decided as part of the representation review that Council will carry out in 2024. This review is a process to look at our current system, the number of wards, their boundaries, their names, and ask ourselves whether there's still fair and effective representation for our communities of interest. Public consultation is going to be an important part of the representation review and we'll be asking you for your input so you can have your say about how you're represented on Napier City Council.
Kia ora tato. Uh, my name is Jackson McFarlane and I'm your MC for today. I will help be helping with your questions uh, directed to our panel. Uh, for those of you who have just tuned in, ngā mihi. Welcome to our live Facebook broadcast regarding Māori Wards. Uh, whānau, we have come to the Q&A part of our discussion. Uh, please send your questions by Facebook and we will do our best to answer them. Or you can have your say on sayitnapier.nz and tell us what you think. Okay, so we've had uh, some questions coming through. Uh, just be patient with us, Farno, uh, as you address these questions, I will direct them uh, to our panel. Uh, we have a question for Kirsten. Uh, this is a question that has come through uh, recently, seems to be a popular question. Uh, Kirsten, if council can decide whether or not consulting. Uh, well, I think uh, it's common knowledge that for me personally and our whole council, we are very committed to ensuring our community is involved in all of our decision making. And uh, we would never go ahead, forge ahead and make a dec decision about uh, a significant issue like this without seeking input from our community. And in fact, we're required to uh, under our own significance and engagement policy um, to do that. So there's processes that, that we must follow. Uh, but as I said, aside from that, um, it's vitally important that we have the community and the whole of our community involved in a decision such as this. Um, I have a question for Helen. Helen, will the total number of councillors increase or stay the same with Māori wards? And will this cost us more in rates? Thank you for the question, Jackson. Um, at the moment, we don't actually know because we have to carry out our representation review. And that's when we're going to look at how many councillors uh, are appropriate for the city because in between times, the population will have evolved. We have to see um, whether the ward boundaries are still appropriate, whether we want to keep all wards or have wards and at large. So according to all these questions that we have to ask ourselves during the representation review, we'll come out at a number of councillors um, to represent um, the city. And there may be um, some more, there may be some less. And accordingly, uh, the the cost to the ratepayer will is, is is not direct because in fact, um, the government, the central government uh, funds the, the salaries of um, our elected members. So it's not a direct cost, but um, it is an important um, way to um, make sure that all of the city is represented um, appropriately. So we may see some changes, but we have to carry out the representation review first. Kia ora. Uh, Kirsten, I have a question from Deborah. Is there potential for there to be less Māori representation overall? Oh, I think actually that's probably a bit of a tricky question to answer because we don't know who may, if we did establish Māori wards, we don't know who may choose to stand in the Māori wards, we don't know who may still choose to stand in the general wards. And uh, at the end of the day, it all comes down to the people that decide to put their hand up and run in elections. Uh, I don't think we can speculate as to whether introduction of Māori wards may potentially lead to lower representation. Uh, Kirsten, I have a uh, question for yourself and uh, Faya Bev. Uh, if you don't have to be Māori to be a Māori ward councillor, what is the point? I'll go first and then um, hand over to Bev. So I think the important thing to remember in terms of a, a candidate standing in the Māori ward is their, their support or the fact that they're being nominated by people that are Māori and that are on the Māori electoral roll. So they are being supported and endorsed uh, for Māori representation by the people that are nominating and supporting them. And I'll pass over to Bev if she's got anything to add to that. No, I just support you, Kirsten. It is all about um, everyone in this waka. doesn't matter whether you're Chinese, Pākehā or whatever. Um, 
uh, culture, ethnicity you are. It's about supporting the whole. I think this uh, this next question kind of carries on to that uh, for, for you, Kirsten, is uh, we are all Kiwis. Why do we need separate wards? Yes, and that has been a question that, uh, that has come through quite a lot while we've been working through the engagement phase of um, this consultation. And I mean, this essentially is an extension of the government's commitment to biculturalism. And it's very similar to what central government have in terms of um, Māori seats. And at the end of the day, local government has a commitment to Māori representation uh, under the Local Government Act. And that is why it is um, different perhaps than other ethnicities. Kia ora. Uh, for Kirsten, stay there. Why Māori wards are not Chinese or Samoan, shouldn't there be an equal split for every ethnicity in New Zealand. And I guess this comes back again to um, the difference with Māori is around uh, that commitment to biculturalism um, that is driven at central government level. And of course, as an extension of that, that we are committed to that as well. You know, in saying that, I think diversity on our council is great. And I would absolutely encourage anybody, um, any ethnicity, background, walk of life, age, more women would be great um, to throw their hat in the ring. And if it's something that you are passionate about and think that you would like to do, then the more diversity we have in our council, the better. Kia ora. Uh, for Kirsten. Kirsten, this is from Tipene. Uh, at the last election, how many Māori stood for council? My recollection is there was two that I was aware of, although in saying that, you know, I mean, you don't know if some of the other candidates were of Māori descent, but certainly there was two that stood and they were both elected on. I have a question for all the panel. Shouldn't all councillors, sorry, shouldn't all councillors should be, shouldn't all councillors be democratically elected. That's for all our panel. I'll just repeat the question. Shouldn't all councillors be democratically be elected? I'm happy to jump in here uh, to start with, if I may, and just point out that each elector will have one vote. So one person, one vote, and that is the basis of democracy. Uh, according to our representation arrangements at the time, we may be voting for um, a ward councillor, at-large councillors if we choose to have them, and the mayor. Anything else from the rest of our panel? If, if Bev's, yeah, I, I would just like to say, I guess, that actually the fact that we would um, potentially be establishing multi wards does not mean that um, everybody isn't being democratically elected because everyone is still being elected or voted, voted on to council. So nothing changes in that regard. No, nothing changes. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter whether we're Democrat or, or whatever. I think um, we're still all in this together. Um, and Kirsten has touched on it really, really well um, in terms of um, being on everyone in this together. Uh, for those of you who just tuned in, uh, Ngā mihi, uh, welcome to our live Facebook broadcast regarding Māori Wards Community Hood. Uh, I have another question for Kirsten. Uh, Kirsten, what will happen with our feedback? So when we uh, close the consultation period, all of the submissions and feedback that have come in is collated uh, by council officers and put into a report for uh, the councillors and myself to consider. We also hold hearings and that provides an opportunity for those who wish to come and actually speak to us face to face as well. At the end of that hearings process, uh, 
both the Māori committee will be given an opportunity to consider all of the feedback and um, provide their recommendation to full council and then full council will again deliberate um, and discuss all the information, feedback and input that's been received and that will um, inf inform and assist us with our final decision. So Fano, have your say on say at napier.nz and tell us what you think. I have a question for Helen. What is the representation review and when would this happen? A representation review uh, can happen every three years and it must happen at least every six years. Now, uh, it's a time when council looks at how it's structured, how many councillors we have, um, how many wards we have, how the wards are distributed. And then we um, consider, uh, we talk to the people uh, of the city and um, see what areas they identify with, what communities they're close to, where they live, where they work, where they shop, where they um, have their sporting activities and take all of those um, pieces of information to, to develop a, a plan for um, where we need to have representatives to get an even sort of um, fair um, spread across the city and according to that then we can um, estimate the number of councillors, um, the boundaries of the wards that we need. So that's that's the process of the representation review. So we'll be carrying out our next representation review in 2024. Uh, back to Kirsten. Kirsten, how do I submit my views and can I speak to my submission? Uh, yes, so you can submit your views on the Say It Napier uh, website, which we will um, be repeating what that is throughout this Facebook session so people can find that themselves. There's also uh, hard copy forms uh, if you would prefer to do that. Although of course being in level four lockdown at the moment, um, our customer services offices, et cetera, aren't open. So um, I would just need to check with our governance team if we have the ability to mail those out to people that would prefer or don't have a computer, so need a hard copy form. And uh, they will, and so I've now I've forgotten the second part of the question because there was a second part to that question. Yes, there was. And can I speak to my submission? Ah, yes, absolutely. And so when you make your submission, you can indicate uh, on either the online form or if it is a hard copy form that you would like to speak to your submission. And then you will be contacted by our um, governance team to arrange a time. And it, it's, it's around, um, I think, the 18th of October, off the top of my head, is when we've got those uh, hearings scheduled. And, you know, I really encourage people to take the opportunity to come and uh, speak to us at that. Uh, we have a uh, Pātai for the panel, uh, it's from Tai, and Tai would like to know, how can your message of inclusion and biculturalism be encouraged and accepted by the wider community as tangata whenua living in this beautiful city? I see and I feel a lot of discriminations towards us for wanting a tūturu at the tepu. I'll start the conversation. Um, tai, um, tēnā koe, thank you for your um, kōrero um, and your question. Uh, and it is very, very relevant. Um, I believe that um, the conversation between mana whenua and tangata whenua is already happening. Um, there is no um, inclusiveness. Um, if you really wanted to um, come and see us, then please do. Uh, please have that conversation and it's only about having the conversation um, I'm very sorry that you feel a discrimination um, towards you um, and but it's all about having the conversation so if you want to come and see me then please do and I guess further to that uh, one of the reasons that we actually chose to not um, rush through and try and meet the 21 May deadline is because we were concerned that there were members of our community that actually didn't understand Māori wards, which then can lead to, uh, you know, sort of them, people being against it because they don't necessarily understand what it means. And the focus over the last uh, couple of months has been to answer those questions. And we have had a, an extremely high level of interest from across 
all of our community with people wanting to understand uh, what Māori boards mean for us and that helps to break down any of these perceptions or barriers um, and for me it, it's been I think a really really worthwhile uh, process to work through. We have another question for our panel. Um, so if it is mandatory that there is cultural requirements, then why even go through the process of spending money and delaying the decision for the separation of wards? This is for everyone. Sorry, this is for anyone willing to answer honestly. Honestly. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm happy to go first on this one and it, it just I guess to, to clarify initially it isn't mandatory for local councils to establish Māori wards. It, uh, the change that's been made is that a decision of a council now can't be challenged by uh, a poll being demanded. However, this decision still lies with each individual council around the country and the important thing to remember with council decision making is that both our legislation, so for example the Local Government Act, and internal policies such as our significant and significance and engagement policy uh, demand that we consult with our community on all major decisions. And if we don't do that, then we can actually face um, a judicial review um, if, if parts of our community felt that we hadn't consulted adequately, and that would mean that any decision we made would be overturned through a legal process, and um, that's absolutely not something that we, a, a position we want to see ourselves in. And I've been and I can, um, Yep, and I can add to that. As you heard Kirsten earlier say that 2017 was the last time that we had uh, any discussion around Māori wards, and nothing really sort of happened. So it is about inclusiveness and everybody having their say, um, uh, everyone across the board. So I really support um, Kirsten and her quarter or that um, these need to be held, consultations need to be held. There are people out there that say that um, we haven't had enough conversations, we haven't had enough consultations, but now that we're here, it's about having your say. So go say it, go to say it Napier, have your quarter. Sure. Um, I have a question for Helen. Uh, it's from Deborah again. Helen, as a percentage of Napier City Council voting population, uh, how many are registered on the Māori roll right now? Sorry, Helen. Sorry, just unmuting. Um, yeah. So as um, the figures that we have currently are from 2020, um, from Stats Statistics New Zealand. Uh, the general population uh, on the uh, electoral roll was 57,400, and the Māori electoral population was 8,960. Kia ora. Uh, for those of you who have just tuned in, uh, ngā mihi. Uh, welcome to our live Facebook broadcast regarding Māori wards. Uh, in our community hui. Um, I have another question for Kirsten. Uh, when will council make the decision and when will it take effect? So we will be having our deliberations in mid-October mid and we're just working through the process at the moment to ensure that our Māori committee is fully involved um, and making their recommendation to that as well. So the exact date that that decision will be made will depend on, on how that um, aligns, but certainly it will be in October, mid to late October, that the decision will be made. And uh, that will be, if, if we do decide to establish Māori wards, that would be from the 2025 elections. Europe. I uh, have a question for Kirsten, and Bev, you may want to answer also. Um, this is from Melanie. What do you believe are the positive benefits of having Māori wards? Māori wards is absolutely an opportunity to increase Māori participation in council decision making. And, you know, that is what I perceive as the, you know, the primary objective and benefit of establishing Māori wards. It is one tool in the toolbox. Uh, there are other 
other ways that we can increase Māori participation and representation as well. We already do have our, our Māori committee and we're looking at other alternative um, mechanisms that we can also introduce, but certainly um, it is all around participation and representation for local Māori. Absolutely. It's about being around the table and being part of the decision making. So that's that's one of the major benefits for Māori is having their say at the table. Sure. Uh, for Kirsten from Ngāti, uh, but it's lockdown. Why is this happening during lockdown? Uh, well, we, <clears throat> we established um, the timing of this process quite some time ago, of course, and it's unfortunate that we find ourselves in lockdown now, right in the middle of consultation. Uh, but then in some regards, it probably makes it slightly easier for some people to submit if they'd like to, because uh, I'm sure there's a, a number of people that if you're in a, a role or your work is something that you, you can't do from home, uh, then you might have a little bit more time on your hands. So we will be ensuring uh, we continue the consultation on, online and through forums such as this to keep people engaged and uh, again it's it's unfortunate but we'll be working with everything we possibly can to ensure the consultation is as effective as it possibly can be in level four uh, and as we move through alert levels as well. Uh, Kirsten I have a question from Gabby uh, it's long overdue this was being discussed back in 2016 and still nothing has been done it needs to be sorted for this local election. As I mentioned earlier, unfortunately, we felt that we could not work through this uh, properly and try and meet the 21 May deadline, which was when we could have established for the 2022 elections. And we were in a position, unlike many other councils around the country, where there hadn't been any consultation in the past. Uh, if Hastings District Council and Hawke's Bay Regional Council, for example, had both had um, extensive consultation with the communities previously on this um, and even had votes around the council table on it, Napier City Council had not done that. And we needed to take the time to have a proper conversation, which means unfortunately, we weren't able to meet that deadline for 2022. Uh, Helen, I have a uh, question for you from Ronis. Uh, there's a list of tasks that the Māori wards will be doing so we can see how they would add value to the community. Um, I think I'll, I, I take this question to mean, will Māori ward councillors be given specific tasks? And in fact, Māori ward councillors, if they are introduced uh, in, in Napier, um, our council is exactly like a uh, another ward councillor or an at-large councillor. So they carry out the same tasks and have the same responsibilities to look after the best interests of our city as all the councillors do. Uh, Ronis would like to say, would like to add, is there a list? Sure. There, there is no specific list for each councillor. Each councillor has the responsibilities of the entire council um, strategically to, to manage the, the um, progress and the well-being of our city. Thank you. Well, those of you who have just tuned in, uh, Ngā mihi and welcome to our live Facebook uh, broadcast regarding Māori wards and community hui. Um, if you would like to have your say, please go to Say It Napier NZ and tell us what you think. Uh, we have another question from Sowan. At just days short of 79 years with a lifetime working or spending a lot of discretionary time with Tangata Whenua, I vocally support the proposal to establish Māori wards because I have seen time and time again the raw deal dealt to this cohort. I have been deeply involved with charitable organisations and I have seen how Māori them so promptly support issues of crisis for all the community and the Princess Te Puea traditional by opening their hearts and their fuddy to the needy. 
be questioned. Kia ora, Salwin. Mm. Absolutely. Um, when you mention Princess Tapuya, yeah, absolutely, she's the role model for, for everyone, um, especially in Māoridom, um, when we always give um, to everyone that's in need, not just for Māori. We have, um, so thank you for your 79 years of service <laughs> to our community. So, na mihi ki and I hope you continue to do so. Um, but yes, you're so right. Um, and, and mentioning her is the pinnacle for us as Māori Dim. So thank you. Continue your awesome duties. <clears throat> Uh, Helen, Deborah would like to comment. Thank you, Helen. So the current registered voters on the general roll being 57,400 is four times separate wards overall. If the Māori roll has 8,960 voters, does that mean just one Māori ward or numbers for the numbers not even a ward? Only a part one. So uh, uh, the, again, the calculation will depend on the total number of um, ward councillors that would be in place at the time of, of the introduction of uh, Māori wards. Um, if we have a fraction, so a 1.5 or above, then we round up 1.5 or below. Um, below 1.5, then we round down. So yes, looking at the, the current population, and if we have a similar number of councillors, then we would probably have two ward councillors. If we drop down to having um, uh, fewer wards, then we would go down to one Māori ward councillor if um, Māori wards are introduced in 2025. Kia ora. For those of you who have just tuned in, uh, ngā mihi, welcome to our live Facebook broadcast regarding Māori wards. Please continue to put your questions in and we will get to them promptly. Um, or you can have your say on sayitnapier.nz. Um, I have a question from Paul for each of the panel. How are they going to add value? Uh, I'll, I'll jump in here and, and go first. And I guess it's it's in line with what we've been saying uh, with some of the earlier questions that have come through. This really is around increasing Māori participation and providing a voice around the council table. And as Helen pointed out earlier, um, the, the Māori ward councillors actually have exactly the same role as the general ward councillors as well. And we have um, a responsibility and are accountable to our whole community, but it is giving that um, opportunity for the Māori voice to be present at the council table. Um, we also need to remember that there is an obligation on councils to support the, um, the principles of the Treaty of Waitangi and encourage Māori participation, um, help develop the capacity within um, the Māori community to participate in, in council, um, in local governance. And um, so this is a, a one way for um, people to be given an opportunity to participate in the, the local government uh, within our city. And anything like um, Māori wards to help support uh, Māori participation at all their tables adds value, adds value for the whole country. What's good for Māori is good for all. Kia ora. I have a question for uh, Kirsten. Why, was, why were Hastings District Council and Hawke's Bay Regional Council able to make decisions to have Māori wards in time for the 2022 local body election, and Napier City Council did not. And again, it is very much because both Hastings District Council and Hawke's Bay Regional Council had been out talking to their communities about this historically. I think from memory, Hastings District Council had undertaken consultation from about 2013 on, on various occasions, uh, as had the Regional Council. The Regional Council had actually had um, a vote on this 
exact um, issue earlier this year or late last year, I can't remember the exact timing, um, before the change in legislation was made. So they had a lot of hi historical context and historical feedback from their communities that enabled them to be able to meet the 21 May deadline. I have a question for Kirsten and Helen. What will happen if the council say yes to Māori wards now, and then a new council comes in and wants to change that decision? I'm happy to uh, start responding to that one. So um, the decision, if council makes a decision to introduce Māori wards uh, for 2025, the decision is binding for the next two elections. So that means Māori wards would be in place for 2025 and 2028, and no um, council coming in in 2022 will be able to undo that decision. So it's, it's, it's guaranteed if the decision is made this year. Thank you, Helen. I don't think there's anything further to add to that. <laughs> uh, we have a question for the for the panel uh, from Chanel. Uh, the treaty or white tagging needs to be adhered to 50-50 power share. By cultural inclusive, yes, can be included in non maori wards. We all should have say what will happen. Said with love and respect to all people gathered here. Kia ora, Chanel. Um, yes, and received with love and respect. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you for that. Um, that's a, a, a that's a goal that we all strive to to work towards in terms of how having and what you're saying in your question around fifty fifty. Um, yes, um, a huge huge work towards, and this is one of the things to work towards. That is the representation around the table in terms of the Maori ward. So thank you very much for your call. Uh, Helen, I have a question from uh, Jamie. Why can't we change electoral roles to the Māori wards earlier? You can only change roles every five years, so in 2024? That's correct at the moment. Um, bearing in mind that um, the Māori role system is for the entire country. So um, this is for the, the um, national elections and the local uh, elections. And... Um, the government um, has signalled that they will maybe be looking at um, how often that is um, going to occur and whether it might be better to link it to the electoral cycle because currently it's out of sync with with our electoral cycle. So we haven't had any confirmation of that, but there is a demand coming through from um, local government in particular, asking um, the, the Minister of Local Government to consider the uh, the opportunity of reducing so people have the opportunity to get onto the Māori role more often than once every five years. We have another question for Kirsten. Um, why as our current council, do you not feel you have the mandate to make the decision to proceed, proceed with Māori wards. Sorry, Kirsten, was that clear enough? It was, thank you. And it comes back to me about how vital it is that we involve our community in our decision making. And uh, that's something that is actually at the very core of, of my philosophy as the Mayor of our city and it's so vital that our whole community has the opportunity to share their thoughts and uh, assist us as a council to make that final decision and then alongside that is also our legislative requirements around consultation to ensure that we are not at risk of, of having those decisions challenged in the courts. Uh, for those of you who have just tuned in, uh, Mihi, uh, welcome to our live Facebook broadcast regarding Māori Wards Community Hui. Um, you can have your say on Say It Napier, .nz. So tell us what you think, Fano. Uh, Kirsten, we have a, another question from Melanie. Given, given the ever-increasing legislative importance of recognising and incorporating Māori perspective into decision-making, recognising central and local government should be committed to our treaty partnership obligations. Surely it can only benefit all 
by having Māori walls. And I think it's really important to and, uh, remember that Māori wards are not the only mechanism that we have to ensure that we're meeting our obligations in terms of Māori representation and participation. So as a council, we are completely committed to um, ensuring that we meet those obligations and we're looking at all the tools that are available to us to um, build that partnership and continue to foster those relationships and ensure that Māori have a voice around the council table. Kia ora. Uh, another question for yourself, Kirsten and Fire Bev. Uh, from Christine, why are NCC struggling to allow our partnership for Māori wards before 2025? I'll, I'll jump in first, Bev, and uh, I, I think um, I feel like I'm sort of repeating myself, but, but it really does come back down to that importance um, for us to ensure that the whole of our community is involved in this decision. And uh, when we were faced with a, that very short time frame of early March to the 21st of May to make the decision for the establishment for the 2022 elections, we just felt that that was not going to give us enough time to go out and A, um, provide the information and, and better understanding for our wider community of um, what Māori wards are and what they mean. Um, and, and B, then actually work through the whole submission process and uh, hearings, etc. So just to provide some context, um, we did make the decision before the 21st of May that we wanted to consult with the community this year to enable us to make a decision this year. That process from when it started in um, July, actually it was June, we started our initial engagement in June and working through engagement and then the formal consultation phase, which is what we're in now, leading through to the final decision, which won't occur until mid to late October. October. So it does take um, several months to actually go out and truly consult and have um, a full conversation with our community. And we just unfortunately did not have the time to do that um, to get this uh, decision made for the 2022 elections. Kia ora, Sorry. Sorry. Um, kia ora, Christine. And just support of um, Kirsten. Um, you know, I think we've done, uh, we haven't struggled through this. I think the process is fine that we're going through, making sure that everybody's been consulted with, that everyone gets to have their say. I don't think it, we should have rushed things, um, as Kirsten was saying, because it just doesn't make for a good um, life ahead in terms of these Māori wards, in terms of our councillors. So I think the decision made was a good decision. Um, to take our time to ensure everybody has, is at the table to say what they need to say. So now mihi kia koe, Christine. I have a question from Rebecca for the entire panel. Iwi want Māori wards. Panel comment. Short and sharp. Yes. Yes. <laughs> If I could jump in, I would encourage then all iwi who want to show their support to submit um, and if they wish to come along to the hearings to present their submissions uh, to the councillors in person, that is the opportunity for um, our councillors and our community to hear their voices in support of, of this initiative. And I guess, yes, just to, to close off, so we've got a full panel, panel response. Absolutely, if you... Um, want to have, have your views heard, make a submission. I would also just put a little um, comment in here that I have actually spoken to some iwi who personally don't support Māori wards. So I don't think the assumption can be made that um, all mana whenua or all tangata whenua support Māori wards um, because based on some of the conversations that I've been having, there's some that, that think there's other mechanisms that they would rather see than Māori wards. Uh, we have one more question from Mel. Can you tell us more about the role of the Māori Committee? Hi, kia ora Mel, thank you for that. So the Māori Committee has representation of mana whenua. Uh, it also has representation of tangata whenua on the, on the table as well. 
So we have a representation of the community um, that sits on there, uh, a marae representative, representative, um, our post-settlement governance entities representatives. Um, and what they do is when there's um, decisions to be made in terms of council, it's part of the process of the decision making. So they get to um, be part of the proposals that come in, um, projects that come in. Um, the Māori Committee gets to um, question um, the project teams on um, who they've consulted with in terms of tangata whenua, mana whenua. So it's a very, very important process in the cog of the council. Um, so it's about having um, mana whenua having their say and, and at the table. I hope I've um, explained that well, but Kirsten might wanna add some in here. Uh, that was a really good explanation, Bev. I guess just to um, also add to that, the Māori Committee has exactly the same um, role and responsibilities as our other four standing committees uh, that we have at Council, and they are very much part of the decision-making process in terms of providing uh, their recommendations and also uh, questioning, you know, drilling down on projects and papers, and uh, it's, it's a vital part of our decision-making. Looks like we have one more question. Uh, this is from Tipini. So two and two Māori who tried to get into council and did get in, that's 100% success. I see one issue is we don't have enough Māori trying to get into this position. Fire bed. How do we get our people to try get into these positions, whether they are general role or Māori role? And Kirsten, how can NCC help support this? Maybe some sessions on strategies and planning to stand for council. Oh, kia ora. Um, kia ora tipene. Um, it always goes back to consultation, communication, um, and have a, a really good scope of what um, is wanted and needed for our people. Um, it is about our people getting around the table as well and talking to our people. Um, mana whenua talking to mana whenua, tangata whenua talking to tangata whenua and having those discussions. Um, there are great people out there in our communities that would ideally be good for uh, some of these positions. So put them up, put them up, have the conversations, have those hard conversations if it's needed to have. But um, yeah, don't be shy. Um, I'm, I'm at the council, so if you need to talk to me uh, around in those sort of things, yeah. If they've got the skills, if they've got the, yeah, the, the vital skills that are required for the council, then or wherever, or whichever organisations, then get them to apply and support their um, application um, wholly. Um, because if they don't have support and they don't feel like their, um, you know, their, their whanau's around them, um, then what is the use? But we need good skilled Māori in these positions. Kapoi. Hi. Kia ora tipani. and I guess here yeah, to follow on from that as a council we are absolutely committed to supporting um, Māori candidates or in fact any candidates that are or people that are considering putting themselves up as candidates and providing them with some assistance um, and just you know mentoring them through that process. I was recently involved in a workshop uh, that Baden Barber, uh, Hastings District um, Councillor, and Hinawai Ornsby, who's a Hawke's Bay Regional Council Councillor, ran, uh, which was specifically for uh, Māori who were interested in potentially running for local council in the future. Uh, and I went along and, and ran a session as part of that. I understand they are intending to run a, a similar workshop in the future. And I think that uh, that is a great way to encourage and actually provide the support for any uh, local Māori that are thinking about putting themselves forward in the next elections. Uh, kia ora whanau. We have uh, come to the end uh, of our Q&A discussion. Uh, first of all, I would like to say thank you to uh, Mia Kirsten-Wise, uh, Beverly Kemp-Harmer, 
and Helen Barbier, thank you very much for your time and your effort in helping answer the questions for our community. Be safe. Um, if you need any more information, uh, please visit sayitnapier.nz, where you can also have your say. Kia ora whanau. What are Māori wards? What are Māori wards? What are Māori wards? Are they Māori wardens? No! no. It's about Māori having a voice at the table. Māori wards sit alongside general wards and allow voters on the Māori roll to elect a representative to their local council. Visit sayitnapia.nz to find out more. Korero mai. Korero mai. Korero mai. Korero mai. Say it, Napier.